everyone, I hope you guys are safe and doing well. We've had some queries about how to do negative questions. And before we dive in, I would like to clear the air about the difference with a boring question and a negative question. In a boring question, we would normally borrow 100, and then in the end, we would have enough to return it back, meaning the answer results in a positive. Though in a negative question, we don't have enough in the end to return the 100, meaning the answer results in a negative. Just to review, let's start with the boring question. In this boring question, we have 34 <laughs> minus 66. We would borrow 100, meaning this, what, this 34 would equal to 134. And then we would minus 66. That answer gives us 68. In 68, we would carry on the rest of the question. 68 plus 59, which gives us 127. Do the question with me. After 127, we have minus 46, meaning the answer is 81. Plus 87 as the last gives us 168. Now remember the 100 that we borrowed on the top over here? so that we could subtract 66, we'll return that now. Once we return the 100, our answer is 68. No negative, just a positive answer, meaning that's a borrowing question. This one, though, will result in a negative. Let's try it. We have 21 minus 82. We have to borrow 100 because 21 is not capable of giving 82. So we have 21, and then we add 100. 121 minus 82. That gives us 38. 38 plus 16. 54. Let's do the next. Plus 29. 83. Now we have that subtract 42. Do we have enough to subtract? Yes, we do. So let's subtract our 42. In the end, we have 42 left over. But we, we had a 100 that we borrowed over here. That means we don't have enough to give back. So our answers would, the answer would go into a negative. There are two ways you can find out what the negative answer is. The first one, we borrowed 100 over here. So take 100 and subtract the answer you have in the end. That means negative 58. If we have 100 minus 42, it gives us negative 58. The second way is using your abacus. On your abacus, what are the beads that are not touching the beam? Here we have the 50 that's not touching the beam and the 7. Once you're using the abacus rule, there's one thumb rule that applies. The thumb rule is always plus 1 on the 1's rod meaning we have 57 that is not touching the beam and add one to the ones rod. That would result in meaning negative 58. So the answer is negative 58, no matter which way you find out. I hope that clears up a lot of um, inquiries. Thank you guys.